Welcome to my new studio. This is my little logo up here. And I had a request to take a look at the Creality K1 and show everyone what's going on with this new extruder that I've put on here. This is a Sherpa Mini extruder, but let's take a look at how I've attached it onto this K1. Now before we take a close look at the K1, I want to show you what's going on with my lighting situation. Basically I've got this really nice LED grow light pointing up at the ceiling, creating like this nice spotlight effect that's re-radiating down onto me. So I want to give a huge thanks to Vivor for sending me this LED grow light. I'm using it to grow my channel and apparently they're going to send me some inline duct fans which are also used for growing things. I'll leave links in the description below to where you can get a light like this. Now before you go through all the hassle of pulling out the old Creality K1 extruder and replacing it with something else, I figure I should explain why you might want to do this. So it's my opinion that the Creality K1 extruder isn't fully baked yet. It's a really nice looking and compact design, but I think there's some small flaws with these initial units that could easily be solved by just replacing it with a aftermarket extruder like my Sherpa Mini that I've got installed now. Now it might come as a surprise to you, but this new Creality extruder is very similar to something else on the market, and that is this uh, LGX Mini here. You can see they've got pretty much the same shape, similarly sized drive gears, and similar access points to where you insert the filament, and where you throw the knob, and the gear reduction. So there's a lot of stuff in common between these two extruders. However, one place where they differ is the lockup mechanism. So on this Bontech LGX Lite, if you flip the switch back and forth, it's very um, assured in the position that you're setting it into. It clicks into position and it stays there really well. And you can't bump it out of position. Like I'm pushing on this and it's just springing back to the closed position. But if I push on it hard enough, it'll switch to the loose position, which allows me to easily remove and install filament or the middle position, which is designed for flexible filaments, and then the fully locked position, which is designed for normal filaments, like PLA and carbon fiber, basically anything that's like a normal hard plastic. Uh, contrast that to the K1's extruder. You can see it's got kind of a similar thing going on. You've got a lock position and an unlock position. The unlock position allows you to remove the filament easily. So. Uh, um, if I just put that back in and then I hit lock, you know, throw the switch over, now it's locked in and when I move this, it's having to back drive the extruder to get it to move and, you know, the teeth are engaging there nicely. However, there is a bit of a problem here and if that, if I bump the switch, um, I can get it to unlock and then lock, but if I just push it a little bit, it doesn't return back to the fully locked position. So you can see there's a little bit of wiggle here. And this can be highly detrimental to your 3D printing experience. Basically, if this gets knocked out of battery just a little bit, the extruder gets a slightly less strong grip on the filament. And if it gets bumped enough, then it'll completely slip past. You can see I'm pulling filament through, and um, the extruder is not preventing it from going through, and it's not having to back drive the motor to get it to push through. So, you know, that's just kind of a worst case scenario because if this were an actual print, then you'd be in a situation where you're not actually extruding plastic, which results in virtually any print that you're working on failing. Now, you just have to make sure to lock this all the way and then everything's all good. But the other issue is that there's a drag chain on the K1. If you look at it over here, you can see this chain on the top this chain can actually bump into that switch. And if that drag chain bumps into the switch during the course of normal printing, that can knock it into an unlocked position or even a semi-unlocked position where the uh, extruder just has kind of a looser grip on the filament now. So now you can see I can pull it through. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And if it experiences any back pressure or adverse events, then it's gonna completely stop the extruder from working at all. So that's kind of a design flaw in my opinion. You should have a strong return to lock feature so that it doesn't come unlocked in the middle of a print because that will result in a failed print every time. I have a ton of extruders at my disposal and virtually all of them use a spring to ensure you get adequate clamping force of that filament. 
Even if you look at all of Creality's past designs, they're all using a spring to get that clamping force. Even the Sprite hot end, which is the one that was right before this. If you look at this uh, extruder module from the Bamboo Lab P1P, it also has a little spring in there that ensures you're getting that clamping force. It's just a super basic design feature that all extruders have used. The only people that have gotten away without having a spring involved is Bond Tech. So Bond Tech are like the OGs of good extruder technology. Really, they've done a great job with this LGX, giving you that firm lockup in various uh, locking positions. It just does a great job without using a spring and it requires a lot of precision engineering and deliberate decision making. I just feel that Creality didn't do the prerequisite testing and quality assurance to make sure that they get a 100% functional extruder every time. I know that you can get successful prints with this extruder, it's just a matter of reliability. Do we want to be aiming for 95% reliable or something more like 99.9% .9%, which is what you get out of like a Bond Tech or this Bamboo Lab extruder or virtually any other extruder that's using a spring like this, even Creality's old Sprite hot end, they all performed better than this new K1 extruder. So it needs a little work. Now this is something that Creality is actively working on, so I think they'll get the issue sorted out eventually. But in the meantime, I'd like to have a functional printer. So I've gone ahead and replaced the uh, K1's stock extruder here with this Sherpa mini extruder. So let's take a look at how we've attached this onto the print head. Now there's a couple of portions to this mod. I think the most challenging part was just getting this thing attached to the K1's extruder head. Um, it ended up not being too difficult once you get the right model. So I custom designed this little insert that goes in in place of the old extruder and uses all of the same mounting features. So basically pull this out, drop this in, in that little slot in the back of the printer. Once you remove the extruder, it'll be pretty obvious where that goes. So you'll just need to print this out, attach the uh, Sherpa Mini or whatever else you want to attach onto here. If you're not super confident in CAD modeling or modding in general, then I would just go ahead and use the Sherpa Mini because I've already tested it here and made sure all the clearances work with it. You can see when I move this all the way to the back, it has clearance for everywhere in the build volume. So I tested this and it's working great. One issue that I ran into is that the bracket had to be repositioned slightly. So I basically took the same bracket, removed it, and printed out a little spacer piece, and then flipped the bracket around, used some different fasteners, and kind of jerry-rigged this up so that now it's out of the way. And if you wanted to do this in exactly the same way, I'll leave a link to all of the parts that you would need to do this. Basically, you just need some M3 standoffs right here, and then you remove this metal piece, flip it around 180 degrees, because originally the L bracket comes with the, uh, the vertical face towards the front, but I flipped it 180 degrees, now that face is towards the back, and the way I bolted all of this in, it just moves everything back um, about one centimeter, which is all you need to get adequate clearance for this whole thing to work. All right, so um, that's about it for the mechanical mods. It's really simple. This adapter piece that I designed has all of the same mounting features that the original extruder has. So you're using the same three bolt holes to secure this in place. The way that I designed this is I printed out the holes so that they're sized such that you can just thread an M3 fastener directly into that. So you can even reuse the same fasteners that came out of this thing. So it's overall a very simple mod and uh, one that would be pretty easy to install. It gets a little trickier when you get into the wiring part of this because you're going to have to rewire the stepper motor from the traditional plug into one of these tiny little plugs like this. Here you can see the tiny little plug that is used on the stock extruder. But if you look at virtually any other stepper motor on other extruder brands, they'll have a plug like this. This is a JST XH connector with four pins. And what you need to adapt it to is a four pin Pico blade connector like this. And you have to make sure you get the pins right. So I'll throw up a couple of pictures of a little adapter piece that I made. It wasn't too hard to put together, but you're just gonna have to make sure you have those connectors on hand. 
You can also cut and re-splice the wires, but I prefer to use adapters whenever possible so that I'm not destroying the old components and I can go back to them if needed. And again, this wiring could have been a lot cleaner if I just cut these wires and then soldered a new connector on there and just put them on. But I kind of like things the way that I did it here. But with this little adapter piece that I've designed, it basically moves the mounting flange for the extruder up to the top here. And that gives you a ton of options. You can attach one of these uh, Fetus extruders, maybe a Bontech LGX extruder. You can attach it up there, no problem. You might even be able to plug in one of these uh, Bamboo Lab extruders if you're feeling adventurous. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities here. Right now I've just got it set up with the Sherpa Mini just because that's what I've tested and what I know works. So if you just download this model as is, you'll be able to install a Sherpa Mini extruder on here. So that's about it. I mean, now I've got this running and everything works fine. However, there is one more challenge that you're gonna have. And let me show you how my first prints turned out so I can show you what I mean. So this is what all my first prints were looking like as soon as I installed this extruder. Basically, I was running into a problem where it was extruding half the plastic that it needed to. So after a little bit of tweaking in the slicer, I was able to get things working just like this. Now, the ideal way to solve this problem is to update your E-steps per millimeter, which is basically telling the printer how many steps are required to move the filament one millimeter. However, I couldn't find a way to do that in the current build of the firmware on this Creality K1. So I had to do these updates through the slicer settings. Basically, I changed the slicer settings so that all of my flow rates are set to 200%. So it's extruding twice as much plastic as it thinks it needs to, but this ends up being perfect for this because the E-steps per millimeter on this extruder are roughly two times that of the stock extruder. Um, that also means that you're getting a higher gear reduction here, which is kind of neat. However, you're using a smaller stepper motor, so I think it all kind of balances out so that they produce about the same amount of torque. It's just that the stock extruder probably has a higher top speed, whereas this one might have a lower maximum volumetric flow rate. Both of these extruders are more than adequate for typical printing. Like everything up to 30 plus cubic millimeters per second will be able to be handled by this. So yeah, if you wanna try this mod out, just uh, let me know in the comments. I'm going to put links to all of the relevant files and parts that you'll need in my Patreon. So go over there and sign up if you wanna check out how to do this mod. We can go ahead and look at these print results. They look quite nice. This is a clear PETG, and uh, this one was printed with 0.2 layer height. This one was 0.1 millimeter layer height, so, you know, a finer print. But I think they both turned out about the same level of quality. One thing that I will say about these prints is they both have these really fine vibration artifacts that show up um, on these sidewalls. I'm not sure if you can see them, but you try and take a look. They're kind of difficult to see, but if you look closely, you'll definitely notice them. So yeah, that's the only other issue that I have with this K1. Other than that, I've had a pretty good experience printing with it. It's just the extruder and these really fine artifacts. I think Creality is still working on a fix for these, so I think in the future we might have those issues sorted out. But for now, I'm just plopping this new extruder on there and calling it good. So let me know in the comments below, do you think Creality should support mods like this or try to shut it down? Because I know, um, based on my communications with them, they kind of don't want this to be a printer that people are modding. However, I think Creality really needs to play to their strengths here. They're kind of known as the printer company that you buy a printer from them and you get to mod it. That's half the fun. So if they come out with a new flagship printer that has a different set of values than other printers in its lineup, I think that's not the best signal. I'd prefer Creality remain as the modding brand. Just, you know, you get one of these, you can throw whatever you want on there. I know Bamboo Lab is pretty much actively hostile against modders and aftermarket parts. So if Creality can produce a similar fast Core XY printer, but also build up an ecosystem of aftermarket mods, I think that would really give them a leg up over the competition. In my last video, I compared this Ender 5S1 to the Bamboo Lab P1P. And I'm gonna be honest, this printer would have lost wholeheartedly. It wouldn't have even been close 
if it was just this printer in its stock configuration versus the P1P. However, thanks to the mods that I threw on here, I think it really elevated the performance of this machine and made it very competitive with that P1P. But if Creality wants to start locking things down and kind of playing that game with Bamboo Lab, I think Bamboo Lab has a better printer in the stock configuration, but just allow people to change things and upgrade them, and I think, you know, you could have a real winner on your hands. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think Creality should lock this printer down or leave it open to mods. I found workarounds and hacks to get this to work, but what do you think the philosophy of Creality should be moving forward? Remain as the king of the modder printers or just compete with Bamboo Lab at their own game, which is to make a highly competent hypercube printer where you don't get to mess with anything and it's just basically an appliance. Um, and I'll be honest, it's going to be pretty expensive to install this. The extruder is about $47. We'll just call it $50 for the extruder. I printed it out of PETG in case I wanted to run this in an enclosure. I think the PLA might be kind of pushing it um, in terms of its temperature range. Then I had to um, wire up this little adapter piece, or you could also solder these wires into that Pico Blade connector but that's going to be a little bit complicated as well. And then I needed a bunch of just miscellaneous fasteners to make this all happen. Now I'll try to include as thorough of instructions as I can on my Patreon if you want to follow along and throw one of these on. So that's about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.